Go to London again. This time uh, we have uh, Imran Shah, who's a spokesperson with Muslim Public Affairs Committee UK. Uh, good to have you with us, sir. Uh, again, we have some warnings that the situation is uh, the terrible, they're facing a disaster, blah, blah, but uh, and also the uh, risk of collapsing uh, that Cox's Bazaar area regarding humanitarian response and that kind of thing, and mention of significant funding shortfalls and issues. But uh, the question that still <laughs> remains in my mind hanging though for a long time is uh, we're just hearing these, you know, condemnations and warnings, stern warnings, serious warnings, but why should we have, uh, like I just mentioned, continued international silence regarding the Rohingya? Um, so the silence is partly because nobody really sees it as a as a problem to take you know to take on board. So when when the Rohingya people were fleeing Myanmar, um, it was only really Bangladesh that that was the next stop. Some tried to go to Malaysia, so Indonesia. They weren't allowed to um, uh, you know actually come on the land, and that, there was instances of that happening in Bangladesh as well until so international outcry. Um, so really, it's a matter of whether nation states or rather the leadership of the nation states do want to actually deal with this problem and for the most part um, I mean we see a similar thing with, with Syrian uh, refugees you know almost no country apart from Turkey um, and some degree Jordan um, uh, have been able to essentially uh, really willfully accept the, the Syrian refugee problem and, and this is generally a global problem that you know nation states are they willing to deal with the global um, uh, uh, issue of refugees and stateless is uh, stateless people around the world. That's a resounding no. So this is really a reflection of the wider problem that we have around the world and how you know the nation state model is actually uh, allowing people to fall through the cracks. So uh, in, in your opinion, Imran Shah, uh, who should do what? What's the solution? How how much longer should this suffering go on? I mean, the, 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 the root of this particular problem is because of the Myanmar government not really willing to accept them as citizens again. Um, and some ref, some refugees have actually gone to different countries, including the UK, to become citizens. But at the end of the day, um, this deadlock uh, is something that is caused by the political situation, the Islamophobic situation inside Myanmar. And until we actually get uh, at the you know, until the Myanmar government is actually forced and literally forced to be be compliant towards human standards and human rights and, and so on and so forth when it comes to the Rohingya people, this situation will be perpetual and it will be ongoing, unfortunately. All right. Thank you for your comments. Imran Shah, spokesperson with the Muslim Public Affairs Committee, UK, joining me from London.